Hello, my name's Gideon Cordova and this is my two cents adjusted for inflation. In this episode, we look at modern monetary theory, which is an economic framework that's been developed by the likes of Warren Mosler, L. Randall Ray, Professor Bill Mitchell from the University of Newcastle here in Australia, and Stephanie Kelton, who in the last US presidential election acted as the economic advisor to Bernie Sanders. Modern monetary theory recognises that a sovereign nation which is the monopoly issuer of its own free-floating currency can never become insolvent. What does that mean? Well, before 1971, most of the world operated as part of the Bretton Woods system, which was basically the gold standard. That is to say that the currency was convertible into gold. If you had 10 Australian dollars, you could go and convert them into $10 worth of gold. Since 1971, the United States abandoned that system and all of the other countries abandoned it along with the United States. It used to be that our currency was pegged to the United States dollar, which was convertible into gold, and that's no longer the case. Since 1983, Australia has not been on a pegged exchange rate. It means that the Australian dollar is free floating in the marketplace. It's not convertible and the Australian government doesn't promise to pay you anything in return for your Australian dollars except other Australian dollars. What this means is that the Australian government cannot go broke. They are the monopoly issuer of the currency. A good way of looking at this is to look at the board game Monopoly. I just happen to have the rules of Monopoly in front of me and sure enough the first thing that you do when you sit down to play the game of Monopoly is you select a banker. Now it says in the rules of Monopoly the bank collects all taxes, fines, loans and interest. The bank never goes broke. If the bank runs out of money the banker may issue as much more as needed by writing on any ordinary paper. I'll say that again. If the bank runs out of money, the banker may issue as much more as needed by writing on any ordinary paper. Well, it's the same with the Australian government today. It's the same with the US government. It's the same with any government that is the monopoly issuer of its currency. It's different, however, from the states of Australia. The states are not the monopoly issuer of the currency. It's different from the European Union. The countries within the European Union are not sovereign and to the extent that they do not have monopoly issue of their own currency. They have to rely on the European Central Bank to create the currency. Now, if you or I create our own currency, that's called counterfeiting. Here in Australia, only the Australian government has the right to print the money. So, modern monetary theory recognises that a government cannot become insolvent. It can never go broke and it can always purchase whatever is available for sale in its own currency. That's not the same as saying that they should create infinite amounts of money. It simply says that there is no fiscal constraint on them doing so. Importantly, the modern monetary theory approach also recognises the importance of sectoral balances. This was something developed by a British economist, Wynne Godley. There are really only three sectors that we need to look at when understanding sectoral balances. The government sector, the private sector, and then the foreign sector. So basically the foreign sector and the private sector could be lumped in as the non-government sector. And we know from a basic accounting identity that one person's asset is another person's liability. One person's income is another person's expenditure. When I spend uh, $10 buying a, a, a lunch, that is my expense, but it is also the income of the person selling me the lunch. Similarly, when the government holds a surplus, that is necessarily the deficit of the non-government sector. So, in our mad rush to try and eliminate government deficits, what we're really doing is significantly impairing the non-government sector to have surpluses. So we'll talk about that a bit more later. But another really fundamental part of modern monetary theory is the recognition that money is simply a unit of measurement. It's a way of keeping score. It's a record. You should think of money not like an object, something that you touch and feel, but more like a unit of measurement, like centimetres or acres or hectares or kilograms. Imagine at the last AFL Grand Final, the uh, Collingwood Magpies are beating the North Melbourne Roos by... A, a huge amount. Nobody's ever worried that 
if the if Collingwood is beating North Melbourne by too much, then all of a sudden they'll have to stop the game because we've run out of points. That can't happen. The scorekeeper in a game of AFL can never run out of points. They neither have points nor don't have points. It's simply a way of keeping the record of the game, how well the game is going, who's ahead and who's behind. In the same way the Australian government keeps a record of all of its expenditure and all of its income. That is their current account, their deficit or their surplus. But it's not something that they can run out of in the same way that you can't run out of points in a game of AFL. So when we talk about modern monetary theory, we recognise that there is a political consensus in Australia right now to try and eliminate government deficits. And if you follow along with modern monetary theory, you'll recognise that this is a very misguided approach. The government deficit is the non-government surplus, and vice versa. The government surplus is the non-government deficit. Fundamentally, modern monetary theory recognises that it is within the power of a sovereign nation which has a free-floating, monopoly-issued currency to create as much money as they choose.